Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hera Brown and in today's video I'm going to share with you five powerful strategies that you can use and begin to implement today to reinvent yourself and become the next highest version of yourself regardless of your age. So you ready to begin? Step number one, connect with your inner vision. Like all great transformations, your life-changing journey begins with the vision of who you wish to become. Who is it that you really want to be? It was James Allen who said, who wrote in As a Man Thinketh, dream lofty dreams and as you dream, so shall you become. So what is it that you dream of becoming? Who is it that you dream of being? You know, people say, well, I don't know what my vision is. What, what, what is that? How do I connect to it? I believe your vision is that small, kind of quiet inner voice that says things like, you should write a children's book, or you should open a bookstore, you should start your own business, you should teach a course, you should become a teacher, you should become a nurse, um, it's t you, know, you should lose weight, you should, st you should start working out. It's that little voice that we hear in our head. And, it, and, and you know what, it, to me, that is our higher self calling us forth to express ourselves and expand ourselves in ways that we know deep within us are possible. We just haven't done it as of yet. That's your inner, um, your inner vision. And that's what we want to connect with is, you know, who am I? What is that next version of myself? An easy way to get started connecting with your vision is to grab your journal and answer some of these questions. First, who do I want to become? And just free flow write everything that comes, everything that comes to your mind. You know, who do I want to be? Who do I want to become? How do I want to show up? You know, what, what more do I want for my life? What more can I create with my life? And then once you get an idea of what that is, and don't censor it, don't say, oh, well, I, I could never do this or I could never do that. I don't have enough money to do this. Don't censor what's coming out of you. Just let it come out of your thoughts and onto your paper of, of creating this, this next highest version of yourself that is already within you waiting to be made manifest. So once you have an idea of everything that comes out, then you can just simply start asking questions. So, you know, you're building, it's like you're recreating and rebuilding yourself from, from the foundation, right? So you can start saying things like, okay, so now I know I have a vision of who this woman is or who this person is. So then the next step would be, how, do, how does this person act? How does this person show up every day? How does this person that I have envisioned in my mind, how does this person eat? What is this person's habits? What are the rituals? What makes them happy? How do they spend their time, their money? Who are their friends? You know, what are they doing? And you start to get an idea and flesh out this, I'm going to say character, but it's really the next highest version of yourself. And as you start to flesh this out, you start to connect with the, the simple daily decisions that actually lead you to being able to create this next highest version of yourself. So that's step one. Connect with your vision. Connect with your inner vision. Connect with your highest vision of yourself. Step number two is act as if. So act as if, so you're going to actually begin, begin acting as if you are already this next highest version of yourself. So act as if, listen, life, we make it up as we go along anyway. So just act as if, how do you want to show up? So what I would recommend with your journal still is, is write a list of all the words that represent this new higher version of yourself. I'll give you an example of mine. So my words were things like um, fit, healthy, happy, glamorous, beautiful, wealthy, financially stable, fun, 
So whatever the words are for you, and listen, I wasn't those things before I started my transformation at age 61, <laughs> after, a, after a breakup, um, you know, I wasn't necessarily those things. In fact, I wasn't those things, but I knew that that's who I wanted to become. And so when you connect and, and use words and you use vision to connect with who you want to become, it allows an opening within you so that you can begin to express this new higher version of yourself. It was Earl Nightingale who said, we become what we think about all day long. So what are you thinking about when it comes to yourself and reinventing yourself and the goals and the desires and the dreams you have for this next highest version of yourself? Are you thinking, yes, I can do it. Yes, this is calling me forward. I believe with the right steps, I can move my life forward. Or do you give up before you even get started? Are you saying, you know, this is too hard. There's no way. I don't have enough money. I'm too old. All, the, all of those stories that we tell ourselves, because they're just stories getting in our way, holding us back, keeping us stuck. Here's the other thing too. We can only do what we believe we can do. So if we think that we can't write a book, we won't even attempt it. We'll just assume we can't write a book. We've de if we declare it to be true, I can't write a book, I'm not an author, I can't write, I'm not a writer, then we won't even move forward. So we really need to let go of some of these declarations that stop us from moving forward. Listen, the past does not equal the future. The past does not equal the future. So just because up until now, you have not been able to write a book, just an example, does not mean diddly squat about you writing a book now. Just because in the past you didn't, I don't know, get married or find the love of your life, doesn't mean that now you won't get married or find the love of your life. So the past doesn't equal the future. Where you are today is a culmination of what you used to think. So your past equals your present. But now in the present, we can think new thoughts. We can take, make new decisions. We can take new actions to get unstuck and create that next highest version of ourselves as we are reinventing ourselves. Okay, so step number three is make room for what you wish to appear. So in order to bring in anything new in our lives, we need to make room for it. So what does that mean? That means a couple of things. That means physically and emotionally and maybe spiritually. So for sure, physically. So what does that mean? It means going through your home and getting rid of things that no longer serve you. So what is in your home that no longer serves you? In fact, you can even easily start with your closet with clothes. What clothes do you have? that no longer serve you, that you no longer wear, that no lo longer represent the person that you are becoming. Since you're reinventing yourself, you're probably reinventing how you show up in the world. So does your wardrobe reflect your newest, highest self? If not, are there things that you can get rid of? So you want to go through your belongings and really take a look and see what no longer serves you and um, what no longer represents who you are. See, blockages keep us stuck. They keep us stuck in the past. They remind us of the past. And when we start to remove these blockages, it opens us up to new possibilities and new um, opportunities, and it allows the newness of life to enter. And that's what's needed in order to reinvent ourselves. If we keep hanging on to the old, the old thoughts, the old uh, memorabilia, it, it keeps us stuck and it, it doesn't allow us to move forward. So we're going to make room for the new by letting go of some of the old. Okay. What you focus on expands. So the more you talk about negative stories, the more the negativity is going to expand in your life. Just stop talking about it. That's what I had to do. I had to tell myself, stop complaining about the past. The past is the past. It is what it is. And me talking about it in a negative way 
doesn't move me forward and it doesn't allow more positive energy to come into my life. It doesn't, it doesn't allow me to become my greatest self. So give some thought, what are you holding on to? What are you still talking about? Because by doing so, you're keeping it alive. Letting go of negative energies allows you to move forward gracefully. And the easiest way that I have found to do that is through journaling. So for example, I would write at the top of my journal, I forgive. And then I would write minimum 27 answers. With all my journal prompts, I always shoot for 27 answers. And the reason for that is because two and seven total nine, and nine is a completion number. So I'm always 27, 27. So who do I forgive? And then I would write whoever I forgive and I'd make sure I get to 27. If I'm only forgiving one person, I'll forgive them 27 times for 27 things. If I'm in forgiving myself, same thing. I forgive myself for this. I forgive myself for that. You know, and just because it's just a matter of getting it out of you. It's not something that you share with other people. It's not something that you're going to, you know, tear the page out or take a picture of it with your phone and send it to the person. No, it's all about get releasing this energy, this built up energy within you so that you can move forward, so that you can become your next best self and so that you can be all that you dream of becoming. So one is I forgive and then you write 27 times. I release and you write 27 times. Um, I bless and then you write that 27 times. Number four is master your mindset. A strong mindset will move you forward. A weak mindset will keep you stuck. So here's the thing. You are in control of your mindset. Your mindset is not dictated by somebody else. It's not even dictated by outside circumstances. You may think that it is. You may think that, oh, this happened and that's why I'm angry, upset, depressed, etc. But it's not the event that has caused those emotions in you. It's your interpretation of the event event <laughs> that has caused those emotions in you. So you are in con total control of your mindset. So it's up to you to master your mindset. So how do you do that? When things come into your mindset that are negative, you know, you can, you can just say, stop, say, stop in your mind. It, it's like, you have to be the, the guard of your mind. So for me, I say, cancel, cancel. So if I start to say something negative or to derogatory about myself, if I start to think something negative or derogatory about myself or somebody else, I'll say cancel, cancel. It's not an option. Cancel, cancel. And that immediately brings my attention and my awareness back to me and the power that I have with controlling my mindset. See, when you control your mindset, you see possibilities. You're not looking at the, the, neg the negativity and the, the aggravations in life. No, you're looking at the possibilities. You're looking at paths opening for you. You're looking at opportunities that are showing up for you. So, it, you know, when you start to focus on the good and focus on possibilities and opportunities, that sets off the reticular activating system in your brain, which is the the, tr the target, it, it's a target seeking mechanism in your brain. So when you say, I'm gonna, going to focus on that which serves me and that which is positive and that which is expanding, your brain and your mind will automatically go to that. And it's when we're focused and the more you focus on the negative, the more you see the negative, the more you focus on opportunity, the more you see opportunity. So strengthen your mindset. How do you do that? you read books, you listen to podcasts, you spend time with positive people. If you have some negative Nellies in your life, limit the time that you spend with them. If, if being on social media is negative for you, limit the time you're on social media. If watching the news or certain TV shows is negative, it ha if it has a negative impact on you, then limit the amount of time you do those, um, the limit the amount of time you watch TV. And it's all about you being in charge of you, you being in charge of you, because nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to do your sit-ups for you. Nobody's going to going to put positive things in your mind for you. It's all you deciding who you wish to become that 
and reinventing yourself. And in order to reinvent yourself, you need to let go of some of the things that you've done in the past because the past has only brought you this far. Now to get to that next level, we need to let go of some of these things so that we can move forward. So what weakens your mindset? Negativity for sure. Negativity, um, not getting enough sleep. Oh my gosh, not getting enough sleep will definitely add to a weaker mindset. So listen, we have to parent ourselves. If you need to go to bed earlier so you can get more sleep because you have to get up in the morning and take care of children or the family or work or what have you, then you know if you know you need to go to bed by 10 to get enough sleep, then go to bed by 10. Don't go to bed at 10 and scroll on, on, on your phone for two hours. You have to be in charge of yourself because nobody's gonna say, hey, Hera, you need to turn your phone off. You know, nobody's gonna tell me, I, I, I'm 63 years old, nobody's gonna tell me I need to turn my phone off. I need to tell me. I need to be the boss of me. So master your mindset. That's step number four. Step number five is tame your tongue. Tame your tongue. What does this mean? This means, and we've kind of talked about it already, is stop saying negative things about yourself and about others. Stop complaining, stop whining, stop blaming, stop lamenting about the past. And listen, the reason I can share this is because these are all of the things that I did and had to go through on my journey of reinventing myself. So I'm speaking from personal experience. It's, it's, it's t taming your tongue is really about Okay, so we're in charge of our mind, we're mastering our mindset, we're mastering our mouth. Listen, there's a saying, the words I speak are what I need to hear. The words I speak are what I need to hear. So if I'm saying neg negative things, it's just coming right back at me. Energy is circular, it comes right back to you. So the words I speak are what I need to hear. Okay, so no gossiping, no blaming, no complaining, no whining no lamenting, um, no looking at the negative. If something comes in that, that we don't like, either just don't say it, don't say anything, or say cancel, cancel, or say I'm not going there. And if you hang around with people who you know are always negative, just say, you know, I am not going to entertain speaking negatively about so-and-so. And, -so. and just, just don't do it. I mean, it's just really owning it's owning your presence, it's owning who you are, it's owning your mindset, it's owning your, your mouth and what you say and, and how you show up. It's about how you show up in the world. Just to recap the five steps to transformation and reinventing yourself. Step number one was connect with your vision. Who do you wanna be? Really get an idea, a feel for who this person is, that higher self of you. You know, look for role models, find, Create a vision board. Uh, use your phone and create a vision board and look for photos or people that inspire you. Maybe their whole life doesn't inspire you, but pieces of them, of what they do, inspires you. Number two is act as if. So just start baby steps. You know, you can easily in every moment act as if. So if the person you wanna become is 10 pounds lighter, then in the moment, you can act as if you're already 10 pounds lighter. So is the person who is now 10 pounds lighter, does that person grab for grab a chocolate bar or do they grab an apple? You know, it's in, it's in every little moment and every decision that we make that moves us forward and moves the needle forward to, for us to become our next greatest self and to reinvent ourselves. Okay, step number three was in order to bring in anything new, we need to make room for it. So make room. So go through your home and in your, your, you know, your personal life and look for unfinished business. Do you have emails that still need to be responded to? Do you have paperwork that needs to be filed? You know, do you have projects in your home that you started that's unfinished? You need to clean up the past and get these unfinished items done because A, they take up attention units. So you wanna get these done, put them behind you so that you can make room for the new, okay? So that's step number three. Step number four was master your mindset. So master your mindset. 
You can you can create a strong mindset. You have that power. You have the power to to create a strong mindset. Your mindset is governed by you. You are the boss of your mindset. And step number five is tame your tongue. No more of that whining, complaining, and and gossiping and blaming and all that baloney that keeps you stuck. Th th those days are gone. You are you are that is not who you are anymore. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you liked it, please leave your comments, give it a like, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.